Start in Kenya. Uh, President William Ruto will this week lead a group to the United States for the second U.S. Kenya Business Roadshow. Meg Whitman, the U.S. Ambassador to Kenya, is part of the mission, which will concentrate on luring venture capital investments into Kenya's tech uh, economy. Uh, this week, the roadshow is visiting Chicago and San Francisco. Primary goal uh, in Chicago is to examine prospective agricultural collaboration opportunities between Kenya and the U.S., and of course, to be a chance for private equity and venture capital firms to look for investment opportunities uh, in Kenya. And that's a quote from uh, Mr. Ruto there saying that, uh, well, we aim to combine the opportunities in Silicon Valley with those in Silicon Savannah right here in Kenya. We believe there's a lot we can learn from Silicon Valley just as we have much to offer them, especially the opportunities that exist not only in Kenya, but across Africa. All right, speaking of across Africa to uh, South Africa, Stellantis, uh, the automaker, will invest 3 billion rand, about $160 million, to develop a new vehicle manufacturing facility in South Africa with the country's Industrial Development Corporation and the Department of Trade, Industry, and Competition. A memorandum of understanding between the owner of companies, including Alfa Romero, Chrysler, and Jeep, and the South African government were initially signed in March. The project was completed on Wednesday during a meeting that was attended by Samir Chifan, who is the Chief Operating Officer for Stellantis Middle East and Africa, and a number of other individuals. All right, to so Egypt, uh, they are mulling, selling uh, a stake, a further stake in the Egypt Tel or Telcom Egypt, rather, sold about 3.7 billion uh, worth of, uh, of, of the stake, that's 10% of it, uh, back in March. And they're looking at selling some more, raising about $5 billion from their IPO program, which will end in June. Also, Egypt is planning a billion dollar investment in their industrial steel complex. Who better to join us to talk about investments across the world than Fosai Louis, head of investments at Sankori Global Investment. Fosai, good morning to you. Thanks for joining morning, us. Good morning, Thanks, Starting in South Africa, with all the issues that they have, what do you take away from Stellantis making this investment in the auto industry? I mean, it just basically is reflective of the fact that, you know, the enabling environment already exists in South Africa, right? So like you mentioned, Stellantis is uh, one of the largest automakers in the world, you know, responsible for brands such as Alfa Romeo, Maserati, um, and so on. So this is something that was uh, an MOU that was signed in March uh, between Stellantis and the um, Ministry of Trade and Industry. And, you know, just to tell you how m quickly things move there, you know, and, and they're already breaking ground already. And this factory is going to be located in the Eastern Cape province where you already have guys like Mercedes, you already have Volkswagen, you already have Ford, they have facilities there. So um, it just makes a lot of sense for Stellantis to do this, um, you know. And the auto sector in South Africa is quite huge. It contributes about 4.9% to the GDP of about 407 billion. It accounts for about 12.9% of South Africa's exports. Last year, South Africa exported a total value of about $135 billion. So that tells you how advanced, you know, that auto sector in South Africa is. It, you know, this factory is going to be churning out about 90,000 cars a year. It's going to employ about 110,000 people. You know, so the economies of scale are really great for Stellantis, and it, it certainly does make sense for, for them to make this sort of move. Thank you, sir, for the breakdown. Very in-depth there. Let's move to Kenya. Um, there seems to be so many summits this year. BRICS, G20, uh, 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 President, Vice President Shetima is heading to, I think, G77 in, in China. Um, what, what is the takeaway from this U.S.-Kenya roadshow for you? The point really is that you have to move to get those investors, right? You know, you have to move out there to showcase what it is that you believe that you've got. And I think that's what Kenya is doing. Um, you know, taking the steps in the right direction to attract the merchant investments in that very critical area of technology. You know, so I think it's it's largely what we expect that you know any serious administration would do, and that is what Kenya really is doing at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. If if Sankori was there and they're trying to get you to put down some cash, what what would you want to see from them if, if at that roadshow? I mean, because we're we're looking at a very critical sector, so essentially you want to be looking for talent. And markets, yeah, yeah. Uh, the market has to be there, right? You know, and that's one of the biggest advantages that Nigeria has got. There is a there is a decent market here. We've also got a, a decent talent pool as well. So, for any investor in that area, you certainly want to be looking at those two key things: talent and the market. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, I guess we can go to to Egypt now. Uh, maybe we can link this back to South Africa. But the this planned investment of a billion dollars industrial steel complex. Talk about how important that is. I think. Egypt has had, um, you know, quite an interesting couple of years, yeah. right? You know, um, the COVID pandemic and the Russia-Ukraine war essentially 
uh, revealed a lot of the challenges that they, they've basically been going through. From a fiscal standpoint, it's been really tough you know, for Egypt. However, they still remain very ambitious in terms of infrastructure investments. They're building a new city in the desert. They're carrying on this, this you know, um, still uh, infrastructure investments as well. It just tells you that in spite of the financial difficulties that Egypt uh, it was facing, um, it still forges ahead to invest. You know, the fiscal situation there is not great at all. Uh, fiscal deficit for 2021 was about 432 billion Egyptian pounds. It increased to 723 billion Egyptian wow. pounds for the fiscal year 22-23. The F Ministry of Finance in Egypt estimates that it's going to go to 824 billion pounds for the fiscal year 23-24. So the fiscal deficit there continues to expand, right? And in spite of that, Egypt is still looking to spend. And obviously, those investments spending continues to widen, um, you know, that fiscal deficit or that deficit gap that we see, um, you know, in, in its budget. And, and that's one of the reasons we're seeing, you know, some of the moves that it's making to essentially try to raise money, really. Oh, perfect. So you've taken us to the other side of the coin. So the deficit is widening. You're spending, spending, spending. What do you make of the, I guess, on the revenue side, selling stakes in? In the uh, Egypt Telcom to try yeah, to raise I mean, it's just part of a grand plan that has been described as uh, an IPO plan. The idea basically is to list about 50 state owned enterprises between now uh, 2024, end of 2024. The, the plan really is to generate about $5 billion from that entire plan. Um, you know, they, I think sometime last month, sold about 30% stake in the you know, Egyptian tobacco company. Um, you know, a, a Dubai-based investment company bought that for about $625 million. So this sort of additional sale for Egypt Telecom is, is just all part of the plan to basically raise some, you know, some more money, you know, um, to number one, try and ensure that that deficit, the widening doesn't just run away or go away, but also be able to fund the very audacious infrastructure plans that Egypt has for the next couple of years. The government is still going to retain apparently a 70% stake in Egypt Telecom. Well, what's an ideal share? Is it between that, them and the private sector? 50-50 or less than 50? I mean, at the end of the day, it really depends on the government that's in power, right? And the sort of influence that it seeks to wield. You know, telecoms is a very uh, strategic area. So if, if the government is still looking to wield quite a lot of influence on the populace, it would certainly look to hold as much as it can. But if, if that's not its, its plan, uh, I think it's better off selling as much as it can, raises as much money as it can. Really leave that to the private sector and the business people to deal with it at yeah. the end of the day. Let the experts handle it. Okay, so I, I you know, have to bring up Nigeria now. Nigeria facing FX issues. We Nigeria has talked about selling um, assets to raise revenue. So what, what are the lessons that one can learn from what Egypt is doing? It is a viable way through which you can actually raise money, right? But you've got to have a really good plan. Um, you've got to have the trust of the investing community locally and internationally. And that plan needs to be crystal clear. You've also got to, you know, benefit from whatever track record, track record that you have created. You know, we've had, you know, rounds of privatization in Nigeria. So the question really is how have they fared? Um, how transparent were those processes? So that will really determine how interested investors will be. But certainly, uh, it's a very viable way through which, um, you know, you can raise money, particularly where you are in a very tight fiscal situation. Are you optimistic for Nigeria's, uh, I guess, uh, plans to try to raise money and get more FX going forward. It's just looking at what else is happening around the world. Because there's so much competition for capital everywhere and for, for these dollars. Well, what do you think? Absolutely. It's going to be tough. We have to be very clear-headed and clear-eyed as to what we want to do about mm -hmm. that situation and what the plan is. Um, you've got to be very clear when talking to you know, the potential investors or uh, you know, um, you know, creditors that will be looking to lend you money. You've got to be very clear with your plan. And I, and I think that the prospects that we've got as an economy is still a very strong advantage. So I think that the messaging, the body language would be very, very critical in attracting those monies. And first of all, head of investments, Sankori Global Investments, always a pleasure having you to talk about these issues. Thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate your time. Right.